Today we're going to talk about the horse's neck, and the basic anatomy, function and biomechanics. So as a rider it's very important to understand some simple biomechanics. All of us riders should have a basic understanding of these things because when we are riding the horse we are always we're asking them to do a lot of stuff and especially when it comes to head and neck we often concentrate on them quite a lot. So we're also going to talk about what the correct position and posture for the horse's head and neck is when we are riding the horse and what's good for them and what's not and how we should well, how we should be asking them to move when we are riding them so we want to be asking them to do things in a way that's beneficial for their health and not and will not cause them pain also, check out another video I have where we talk about the horse's spine in general. So today the focus is on the neck and I'm also going to do a separate video about the back and then the front leg and then also the hind end. So just some basic anatomy of the horse's neck. So the horse has seven cervical vertebrae. And they're actually quite low, so they are, they're actually here. So many people might think that the horse's spine goes somewhere here, but it's actually quite low. So up here is just a lot of muscle and soft tissue. And the horse's neck is the most mobile part of the horse's spine. And most movement in the neck happens here in the upper part of the neck and then here in the lower part of the neck. So the horse's neck and also the spine, whole spine, can move into flexion, so that's rounding, then extension, then there's lateral flexion, so sideways, and then there's also rotation, so it's like a twisting movement. And the first two joints of the horse's neck have very specific movement planes. This is very good to know for us riders because with our hands when we are riding we're affecting this area quite a lot. So if we talk about the first two joints of the horse's neck and the first two vertebrae, here the first one is called atlas and the second one is called axis. And the first joint between the skull and the atlas is called the atlanto-occipital joint. And there's very specific movement in that first joint. So there is flexion, so it's like this nodding movement. And then there's also some lateral flexion. So if we think that we, when we are riding, we're flexing the horse from the pole, it happens mostly in that joint. Then if we think about the, the second one, the second joint, so the joint between atlas and axis, there's a lot of rotation and barely any lateral flexion. So if the horse, when you're asking the horse to flex from the pole, and the horse compensates by twisting the head, so tilting the head and not flexing laterally, so avoiding the lateral flexion, then the movement most likely happens in the atlanto-axial joint and not in the atlanto-occipital joint, so the joint between the pole and the atlas, as it should. So the horse's head and neck represent about 10% of the horse's body weight and it's a very important balancing tool for the horse. And there is a lot, a lot of soft tissue supporting the horse's neck. So there's muscle and there's also a very important ligament structure called the nuchal ligament. 
and that we're going to talk about in another video and also we're going to talk about the muscles more in another video. So how the horse's neck is built and now I'm talking about the musculature tells quite a lot about how the horse is using its body. So that's definitely something you can evaluate yourself from your own horse. So what we want to see is a nice arch here in the upper part of the neck and not big dips, for example, here in front of the withers. And what we don't want to see is very pronounced muscles here in the underneck. So she could definitely have some more muscle here in the upper part. Overuse of any muscle group can cause problems. Often if the horse is ridden in a very hard rigid contact or in very restrictive training aids then they often brace against the contact and then they develop too much muscle and overuse the muscles here in their underneck especially the brachiocephalic muscle which we will talk about in another in another video so correct contact and correct use of the neck muscles and actually the whole musculature of the horse can only be achieved if the horse is ridden softly in a supple contact so if the horse is ridden with very hard and rigid hands the muscles around the pole tighten and then inhibit movement and also create tension in the whole body. So if we talk about the position of the horse's neck when we are riding, unfortunately even or should I say especially on the very highest levels you often see horses ridden too tight in the neck and too short in the neck. So you really want to see the horse reaching towards the contact so we don't want to be compressing the joints in the neck so you can actually try this yourself so really pull your head down and really flex your neck and now try to move your head i cannot even breathe in this position so most likely it doesn't feel very good for the horse either and it definitely affects the whole body. So now really think that you're reaching upwards with your paw. So you really create the space between your vertebrae and see how much easier it is to actually move your head and move your neck. So it's definitely same for the horse. You want to see that nice arch through the whole top line and the neck arching nicely but not going too short and too deep and you want to see the lower part of the neck quite loose so, so the lower part of the neck is not like bulging out but it looks quite soft and you also want to see the horse's jaw relaxed so the jaw is not tight. When the jaw and the horse's tongue are very tight, it also creates tightness because there are a lot of connections that go through, through the neck and through the horse's body that start from the tongue and from the jaw. So it really affects the whole body. So we will be talking a lot more about the correct movement of the horse and correct biomechanics in future videos and how it should look like, how it should feel like when the horse is using its body properly. So that's it for today and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!